How's everyone doing today? I have an awesome Blu-ray and DVD collection update right here. 12 pickups. If you've seen any of these movies or TV show, definitely let me know what you think of them. And first up are two amazing box sets from Arrow Video right there. Bang, bang. And Arrow Video is just killing it recently, especially with their U.S. releases. So happy that they're finally releasing here in the States. And now Criterion Collection is releasing over in the United Kingdom. So it's great that these companies that were once region locked in their different countries are now going across the pond. And hopefully we'll see more releases that were uh, from companies that are region locked going to other countries as well. So everybody can get involved. Uh, but first up is the Killer Dames box set right here. Two Gothic Chillers by Amelia P. Miraglia. And it's the Night Evelyn came out of the grave and the Red Queen kills seven times. I seem to remember there's like a DVD box set with the Red Queen kills seven times with a figure. So that's, I uh, never ended up picking that up. So that's cool that uh, there's a new release for it here. New 2K restoration on both. And it's a box set of 3,000, limited to 3,000 copies right here. And just a ton of special features. And absolutely beautiful box set. I'm going to do unboxings for both of these. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you right now as well. I love that they include the booklet. Again, just tons of information, behind the scenes information, shots from the movie, scenes right there. If you're a fan of the film, just loaded with information for you. And I think it's a nice added bonus. And then, I've said it many times before, Arrow Video is like a combination of Scream Factory and Criterion Collection, again, with great transfer, special features, but then you get the complete packaging as well. You get, you know, the cult titles, too and uh, you know get the clear case newly commissioned artwork and this newly commissioned artwork is amazing you've got disc artwork right there and it's a blu-ray dvd combo set for each you've got the original artwork with the you know you can do the reversible sleeve right there and again uh, the clear cases so it's just a beautiful you know for collectors it's a just a great job every time it's like a complete release you can't go wrong with arrow video and that was the Red Queen Kills Seven Times, and this is the night Evelyn came out of the grave. And I remember this cover, uh, the original cover had like a, like a skull, she had a skull face. Yeah, there you go, that cover is pretty uh, memorable right there. So that's the original artwork. Although, you know, I love that original artwork, uh, but this one right here, I'm a sucker for redhead, so I think I'm gonna keep it on there. I think the newly commissioned artwork is amazing. So very cool, can't wait to dive into these and check out all the special features and I love that each disc is while similar it's unique as well so the artwork is a little bit different so very nice box set right there next up is bloodbath uh, this is from Roger Corman and this is a combination of four different cuts of the movie uh, so I think that's pretty awesome it's 2k restorations they went by different names to portrait of terror bloodbath track of the vampire and uh, from original film materials, so there, you know, there's different cuts. Uh, there's a TV version. Uh, there's all kinds of things added to it when different people got their hands on it. So it's going to be interesting to see all the different versions of this film right here. So very nice box set again. There's the outer case and thick booklet right there. Again, just tons of information. And this one comes with a giant poster as well. Now, I will say, I don't really love this newly commissioned artwork. Um, I like the old school artwork way, way better. But I like the poster. It's, again, the newly commissioned artwork on the, on the one side and the other side. The classic artwork right there. I just love that gothic look right there to it. Very cool. And I'll go ahead and fold this back up. It's a decent-sized poster. And I love that artwork. And I already went ahead and switched the artwork right here to... Uh, the original one so very cool and there's the disc artwork disc one and disc two and again the newly commissioned artwork which i just think is kind of bland but uh, that old school artwork oh that one didn't need to be touched that was just fantastic i love that this reminds me of um, some of the edgar poe adaptations with vincent price as well that artwork love it and then from Warner Brothers is How to Be Single. Now, I'll be honest, I was skeptical going into this. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the female actresses here, except for uh, Alison Brie. She's awesome. I loved her in uh, Community. Uh, but uh, Leslie Mann, I've seen her in just so many movies. Judd Apatow, obviously married to her. And I don't know, she kind of gets tiresome playing that same kind of role, kind of whining. Uh, Dakota Johnson, I think she was in that Fifty Shades movie. Meh. 
And uh, Rebel Wilson. I'm just not a big fan of her. She's so obnoxious. She reminds me of Melissa McCarthy. She plays that obnoxious, like, fat chick role every single time. And she was Fat Amy, of course. So kind of poking fun at it. Yeah, and then she was on some TV show. I can't remember what the name of it was. It was like Happy Fun Time or some garbage like that. That was not a Happy Fun Time show at all. That, movie, that TV show was terrible. Um, but this movie was actually way better than I was expecting, except for Rebel Wilson. She was so obnoxious. She plays that same character over and over. It's just nonstop, and I just couldn't stand her. Every scene that she was in just kind of ruined it for me. And they tried to do all these punchlines. It's just too much. But overall, everything else I liked about it, especially... Um, all the guys in here are pretty well known too uh, that are the counterparts for the women right here. You've got Colin Jost, you've got uh, Rafi from The League, Anders from Workaholics, I've got Damon Wayans Jr. So a bunch of recognizable faces and I did like the emotional honesty to some of the relationships and I really like the view of New York City as well. It was like a character in itself and uh, I, Woody, um, <laughs> Woody Allen, I was going to say Woody Harrelson. Woody Allen always does, does that in his movies too. Does a, does a great job of capturing uh, the city that it takes place in. And kind of makes me think of this as well because there's so many films that he did in New York City. Uh, but this one right here, love seeing the city in it. And uh, it was actually a really entertaining movie. Uh, it does have some depressing moments to it. Again, with the emotional honesty of relationships that don't always work out. But a lot of really funny moments too. And again, it's just people being single in the city, hooking up trying to find relationships and trying to find themselves essentially and it's a decent release from uh, Warner Brothers as well some good featurettes a lot of Rebel Wilson stuff in here outtakes uh, there's a whole special feature look at Rebel Wilson really she's not that great I know people love her I just again it's Melissa McCarthy all over again I can't stand either one of them I don't know I'm again I'm probably in the minority in that but if you like Rebel Wilson there's a ton of Rebel Wilson on there special features dedicated just to her there's outtakes dedicated just to her too it's just uh. all right <laughs> Next up are four films that I got from Blu-raysforeveryone.com. Great site for collectors. They got Blu-rays, DVDs, steelbooks, slipcovers, everything you need. I'll put the link down below. Great site again. Krampus. This was such a fun horror comedy Christmas movie, horror Christmas movie, which I love. So many great ones. This, to me, lands in the top ten best snowy setting horror movies out there now. This was so much fun, and there were some creepy scenes in here. Who knew that uh, Jack in the Box and you know Christmas toys like that, teddy bears and gingerbread men could be so creepy? And uh, I loved it. I love the ending. There's an alternate ending on here too, but I'm glad they went with the ending that they had. And a lot of recognizable people in here as well. Uh, again, Krampus, the kind of evil spirit of Christmas, if you will. You know, if things go wrong, you lose that hope, and uh, the Christmas spirit, Krampus will come and kill you. <laughs> But I feel like Krampus is making a huge comeback. He was in uh, A Christmas Horror Story, and I guess that was kind of him in Rare Exports as well. Uh, it was, yeah, basically Krampus too. So you get a lot more Krampus coming out recently. And I feel like he's been in a bunch of other things as well, uh, other films uh, that weren't quite as good as the ones that I mentioned. I did enjoy A Christmas Horror Story, but I think Krampus was a little bit better. Again, uh, great family setting as well. All the interaction of the characters felt very believable. You know, not getting along with each other, in-laws coming in, stuff like that, and arguing, and that just brings out the evil Christmas spirit even more so. Uh, next up is Ride Along 2. A bunch of movies just fell over. I'll pick it up after the video. <laughs> I just have like piles of movies everywhere. I'm so disorganized. I gotta get a couple more bookcases finally. Uh, <laughs> if you've seen my, my vlogs in here, you'll you'll see all the setup. But Ride Along 2 was way funnier than I was expecting. Um, it is a little bit derivative of the first one, but still very entertaining. Uh, Olivia Munn is so freaking stunning. And I like the chemistry between Kevin Hart and Ice Cube. I could see more of them, you know, kind of joking along with uh, 22 Jump Street like that. You know, those they had great chemistry as well. Uh, Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum kind of reminds me of that. Great chemistry. Kevin Hart is in so many movies, but... Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the movies he does. I like his stand-up way better, but some of his movies just aren't. I'm not just a big fan of him, honestly, in the movies. But uh, he keeps putting them out, and uh, I think this is one of the better ones, in my opinion. I thought this was highly entertaining. He goes on his first case as an officer, uh, undercover, and trying to be undercover, and he's getting married as well. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, quite entertaining, the scene where he plays uh, undercover as, like, a, I think he's like an African diplomat or something like that. That was hilarious to me. Um, so, very entertaining and definitely recommend that one, especially if you're a Kevin Hart fan. Next up is Backtrack. 
This one surprised the heck out of me. Didn't hear anybody talk about this one. Uh, it's Adrian Brody and Sam Neill are the two leads in here. To me, this felt like an American remake of an Asian horror film. It had so many vibes of Asian horror films and just had that, I had actually had to look this up to make sure it wasn't a remake, but it's not. And uh, very mysterious and I love how it all comes together and uh, definitely a good horror mystery film and there's ghosts, uh, Adrian Brody's being haunted, uh, he loses his child and he finds out there's a little bit more and it's connected to something that happened in his childhood and he goes home and he's trying to figure out how to get rid of these ghosts and how he can stop being tormented by them and very great, uh, very surprising film as well, very well acted, well shot. And I would definitely recommend the heck out of this one, Creepy. I think they could have done a little bit more with the ending, but overall, highly recommend that one. Next up is Jane Got a Gun. Uh, I haven't seen this one, but I am a big fan of Natalie Portman. And I also really like the actor in here, if I can find his name real quick. Joel Edgerton, he's awesome. And then uh, Ewan McGregor's in here as well. Um, I guess it's kind of like a homesteader kind of thing. And I think some family members get killed. And I guess Natalie Portman has to you know, take care of business and and a little gun herself. I uh, need to check that one out. I will be doing so soon. Next up is Some of Us. This is a release from Olive Films. Uh, this was an early film from Russell Crowe uh, from 1994. Uh, it's basically him and his father living together and Russell Cr uh, Crowe plays a uh, single gay guy and he's just trying to find love and um, his father is uh, single as well and he's trying to find love and they both find relationships and there's twists and turns and different relationship dynamics and I thought this movie was a lot of fun had a lot of heart but the one thing that happened to the father I was really kind of depressed about it's like ah oh, that's such a downer uh, but still overall really enjoyable and one thing I also didn't really care for about this movie they break the fourth wall over and over to kind of narrate the scenes I feel like that was unnecessary especially towards the end of the movie with what happens to the father character he all of a sudden does that and I'm like that just seems really out of place I'm like doesn't really work considering what just happened um, I feel like they could have just narrated, narrated normally um, with narration over the scenes instead of just you know breaking the fourth wall but overall really good film uh, good emotional honesty with relationships and different family dynamic as well but uh, I liked it Australian uh, film as well so of course Russell Crowe is an Australian actor and this one right here uh, from uh, Lionsgate, this is one of my favorite films of 2015. I don't hear anybody talk about it, which is a shame. This movie was incredible. I think maybe some people might have been off put by the cast because it's mostly older cast members as the leads here, but they, they still have their acting chops. These are classic actors, Christopher Plummer, Martin Landau. Um, it's basically about uh, the lead character, his wife passes away and he's got dementia. So every day he's kind of like losing it a little bit more. And he made a promise that he would hunt down uh, the people who killed his family in a Nazi concentration camp. He was Jewish. Uh, is what they're what they're telling you and he's got the the mark on his arm with the numbers and so he's trying to find uh one of these nazi generals who essentially took a jewish name and is in hiding and still alive and they've narrowed it down to four people with the same name so he's traveling all over he leaves the like nursing home essentially and they're trying to find him and he's going to kill them and get his revenge and i love the twist to it amazing twist uh, it's all about the twist and it definitely pays off um, I wish they would have had shown like some flashbacks from the Nazi concentration days and stuff like that. Um, could add a little bit more um, punctuation to it right there. But overall, an amazing film. One of my favorites from 2015. Highly recommend the heck out of this one. There are some really tense moments in here as well. Next up is The Haunting of Alice D. There are so many The Haunting of movies coming out. And uh, this one is written and directed by Jessica Sonneborn, who actually she has a, a role in the movie as well. And this one is one of those ones that gets lost in uh, just the, the middling of all these haunting of movies. This one was one of the weaker ones that I've seen. It's a ghost movie. It's basically about a young girl who was pushed into prostitution and she's in this brothel and she ends up being killed. And then that's for during the 1890s and fast forward to present day. Um, there's Kane Hodder and Al Snow playing here. It's definitely a paycheck movie for them. Kane Hodder is... Uh, the grandfather, and uh, he's the lead pimp essentially in the brothel, and uh, the grandson is basically a scumbag now, and he, uh, I guess, inherits the place essentially, um, and he brings his friends over and hires some prostitutes, 
into the house and they're all trying to hook up and then the ghost of Alice wants to exact her revenge and uh, there's a couple jump scares but besides that there's really no thrills here it's very disappointing there's a quick shot after some of the credits which answers a question that you probably don't care about anyways uh, this movie I would give it a 3 out of 10 it, it was a huge uh, disappointment honestly that uh, it was generic cliche nothing new here original uh, the acting was just about average it's nice to see Kane Hodder and uh, more movies. Uh, Al Snow, he's usually in low-budget stuff, so no, you know, real shock there. But uh, disappointing. Three out of ten. Could not recommend it. Next up is Sex Ed. This is from Monarch um, Home Video, and this one actually really surprised me. I thought this was amazing, very hilarious. It's about Haley Joel Osment, who's playing uh, a teacher who's teaching sex ed to kids, and he's a virgin himself, so he's kind of a uh, you know, learning along, he's trying to get into a relationship and he's not about hooking up and he thinks he finds the right girl for him and, you know, there's different uh, relationship drama there. And it's the sister of one of his students. Um, I think, though, the last 20 minutes of this movie dragged it down a bit and that kind of took it out of overall score for me, but still enjoyable and one I would recommend for kind of a sex comedy movie. Um, good cast chemistry and it felt believable as far as the roles. So that was uh, decently entertaining, surprising as well. Major Crimes, this is the complete fourth season from Warner Brothers. Nice slipcase right here. And again, I love seeing um, the lieutenant from Police Academy in there. This is a really good uh, crime drama show. Some of the episodes are really dark and other episodes kind of more lighthearted. I like the cast chemistry a lot. I think that's one of the big positives about this show. And I'll go ahead and open it up and show you. It has a nice episode guide right here. And there's disc one. Disc 2, Disc 3, Disc 4, and Disc 5 right there. And it's got deleted scenes and gag reel for the special features. So in total, 969 minutes, 5 disc set. So there you go. If you've seen these movies or TV show, definitely let me know what you think of them. And I'm going to do special unboxings for the Arrow video sets because they definitely deserve them. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.